Hey guys, Comet here. Welcome to episode 6 in my Overly Scienced series. In the last episode, we got oxygen up and running so that we could get dupes into Atmos suits. And I also said that I wanted to try taming some volcanoes. Uh, unfortunately, we need to have an intermediate step in there. I realized I don't have any plastic yet, which means I can't make steam turbines. And steam turbines are how we turn the heat from the volcano into power. First thing we're going to need to do is break down into the oil biome down here. So I'll just extend this ladder down and then see what we can find. And I also know that there is diamond down in the oil biome, so any diamond that I come across I will use to replace these granite floors here so that the decor from these statues can make their way up into these rooms up here. That should improve duplicate morale. Alright, so my dupes have made it down far enough to see parts of the oil biome here. Uh, there's a little bit of the magma biome, and there's something here. Don't know what that is. I don't want to dig it out yet. There's some diamond here we can use. Um, I need to get them further out in both directions here to see if there's any oil reservoirs we can start using some oil wells on. Alright, now that I'm all the way down here, I want to look for places that have sour gas and petroleum, because that could indicate places where the abyssalite is broken, and the heat from the magma will be pouring into the oil biome. And it looks like it might be happening right here, because this is only one tile thick. Um, in places where the abyssalite is two tiles thick, you get no temperature transfer. Um, even though it has a thermal conductivity of zero, when it's only one tile thick for some reason, you end up with heat escaping. It's very minuscule, but over time, and since this is so warm down here, it will heat up your oil biome. And so a good way to counteract that is to have some water down here with you, because water has such a high specific heat capacity. It can soak up a lot of the heat from this biome down here, if there are hot pockets. <laughs> hot pockets. So I'm going to extend this out so I can see more of the oil biome here. Now this spore child here would be a problem, but since my dupes are in Atmos suits, it's really no problem. So getting your dupes into Atmos suits before you get down into the oil biome is kind of a big deal. Okay, they got unreachable food. These two are stuck. To unstuck them, I'm going to change the priority on that to now. And then they should be able to go up and over this way. Oh, also this. Get rid of that. Okay, there they go. And we got new printables. At this point, the only dupes I want to be taking are ones that are interested in... If you go to the skills here exosuit training. If they don't have an interest in exosuit training, then they're going to require more morale, because that's the first thing you want to skill up your dupes in once you have Atmos suit docks. That way, when they're out in the world, they're not super slow. I think I will take the shoveful egg. There's really no difference between these two, because they both turn into the same amount of omelets make sure that I have that enabled here. Yes, I do. Okay. I don't want any shovels roaming around the map right now. When you get shovels, you want to make sure that you contain them in a room that's not very large, because they have the option to path through the entire map. And so if you let a bunch of shovels loose, your game is going to be doing a lot of calculations on all of the shovel pathing. So if you want to improve your frame rate, you need to keep the number of dupes and critters low. Since this is only one tile thick right here, I'm going to put an insulated tile made of ceramic right here, just to try and stop some of that heat transfer. I don't think it's actually necessary. Um, the abyssalite should, theoretically, since it has a thermal conductivity of zero, work, but I don't want to really take any chances. This is a good example where heat has broken through the abyssalite. It's turned a lot of this algae and this biome into dirt. Um, it looks like it's just because this obsidian 
spawned on the wrong side of the abyssalite. So once all of this heat dissipates, this biome will stop heating up. But you have to look for things like this. Uh, sometimes you'll have a neural vacillator where this abyssalite should have spawned. And so you just have this hole in the abyssalite and all of the heat from the magma just goes up and cooks your other biomes. Let's see how much diamond we got from that. Diamond is under miscellaneous, yes. We have 13.1 tons of diamond. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna convert all of this over to diamond. Okay, all of this has been converted over to diamond now. And if we take a look at Nicola here, his average decor is almost 300. And that is giving a morale bonus of plus nine. Last cycle's decor, charming, plus nine. So adding in more decor can improve morale and keep your duplicants from stressing. So this was a lot of diamond to do this though. The other thing I need to put in are these things and these cost a lot of diamond too. This has almost been dug out down here. I wanna try and use, let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, did I count that one already? I've got enough, enough reservoirs for now. I can convert my power grid to petroleum generators and get off of the coal generators that I have set up up here. That way I stop using the coal for power and I instead use it for refining ceramic because ceramic is it's a very difficult resource to get, especially later on in the game, because to make it, you need clay, and clay is pretty limited, uh, just digging it up on the map, and so you have to use polluted oxygen and some filtration medium in order to get clay from a deodorizer, and that's really your only renewable source of clay. So ceramic becomes very difficult to make in later stages of the game. I'm gonna see how many of these arrow pots I can fit in with the diamond I currently have. Okay, it looks like I can fill all of them. Um, see if, if I have enough for down here. I do. Okay. And then I like to put the crown molding right above, right above my espresso machine. Okay, so this should greatly improve morale now. And then let me see also if I have enough diamond to swap out this floor. I do. Do I have enough to do... No, I've got 700. That's seven tiles. So I won't be able to do the top up here. That's okay. Rowan popped up here in the printing pod and because he has suit wearing and operating, I think I'm actually going to take another dupe right now. I have to force him to get on this side of the Atmos suit checkpoint. Then I'm gonna go to priorities. And we'll put him up on operating. Then I'm gonna go to skills and get him skilled up into exosuit training as quickly as possible. And also, don't forget the schedule. Let me get Rowan on his own schedule here. There we go. Alright, put your sunglasses on, because we got a lot of decor. Now that everything has been bedazzled, I want to pipe some of this water. So I'll use, I'll use this pipe right here. I wanna pipe some of this water down into one of these oil reservoirs here. I think I'll do, I like this one. Lead is a super cheap refined metal once you get into the oil biome and the oil well doesn't overheat until it gets to 2000 degrees and the lead will melt before it ever gets to that point. Since you're gonna have water constantly coming in, it's never gonna get that hot anyway. So I find lead to be a really good material to make oil wells and steam turbines out of. So I'm just gonna run some insulated pipe down this way. And then 
over to here like that. And then this one can come over this way, uh, something like that. Now I'm going to use that lead that I was talking about here to make a heavy watt conductive wire. And since we have so much lead, I can just go ahead and convert all of this over to lead. That way everything will be connected up on one, one main power spine. So I'm going to deconstruct this wiring here and then run this heavy watt wire over this way. And I'm actually going to connect this up. Switch all that to lead too. That way we can use some of this hydrogen to run some of the other things on the on the grid instead of relying solely on the coal because this actually produces surplus power. Okay, all of the wiring has been converted over to lead now. Everything is on one big grid. And the priority is set to these hydrogen generators. So this battery here, when it goes below 60, 60%, 60 these generators will turn on. And if we end up with too much hydrogen, they'll turn on again as well. Um, this battery, this whole thing over here, actually, I can get rid of. Because I want to put my metal refining in a more permanent location. And then these coal generators are back up now. They will turn on once it gets down to 10%. And they'll stop charging when it gets to 40%. What I want to set up down here is a petroleum generator. And to do that, I am going to need an oil refinery. To get the oil, I like to set up my oil wells like this. And then I have like a little, little dip here. So the this part right here is where the gas pump goes. So I can deconstruct these buildings here. And then, actually I think it's more like this. Yeah, I usually do something like this. Here. So this block will keep any falling liquids from getting down into this area and clogging up this area. So then I put a pump, a gold amalgam, here, and then a gas pump made of gold amalgam here. And deconstruct all of these ladders, they're unnecessary. automation, I put a hydro sensor here and a hydro sensor here. This one controls the reservoir and then this one controls the pump. And then this I run over here where it is controlled by an Atmo sensor. So I get it connected up to power. And then this Atmo or this hydro sensor, you want it to control this pump so if the oil pressure goes above uh i think it's about 886 then this pump will turn on and you want this oil well to be running if there's nothing in this tile here so if this is ever below oh, about 100 kilograms then you want this to turn on because what this is going to do is cause a liquid lock right here that will keep the natural gas that this oil well produces stuck in this chamber so that this gas pump can pump it out. And it also keeps any carbon dioxide or gases outside from coming back in and getting put into this gas pump. Okay, so this just turned on. Uh, we are consuming water now. I need to set up a pipe to get the crude oil out. And I should probably mop up these extra liquids here. They're just going to get in the way. This atmosphere sensor you want to set to work when the pressure in here is above oh, about 3,000. 
And then I've also found that if I put in some temperature shift plates made of pretty much any material here, it will keep the water in the oil well from turning into steam. Uh, that does happen sometimes. I don't know why. Okay, I've settled on something that looks like this. Now the water will come in on this pipe, get converted into crude oil at a 333% ratio, get pumped out by this liquid pump into these reservoirs up here. These reservoirs will feed this oil refinery, and this oil refinery will convert half of the crude oil into petroleum. And then the petroleum will get stored in these reservoirs up here. All of the natural gas produced by this oil well and this oil refinery will be put into this pipe here, which I need to hook up to some natural gas generators in a little bit. I realize I've made a mistake on this. It's not 886, it's 868. This doesn't want to seem to balance correctly, so I've bumped it up one more kilogram to 869, and that will allow this to work when this is at 100. And I've also connected this up, because I want to get rid of this crude oil down here. I've put in my polymer presses, and now the only thing left to do is to vent these off. So something like this should work. And then we'll start making plastic, and then I can start making steam turbines. Now these make a lot of heat. So, they're going to start overheating if you make them out of gold amalgam, but the steam that they produce should make a little layer of water. Once they're submerged, um, the water will soak up the heat from the building a lot quicker. So, if you just disable auto repair, like we did with the hydrogen generators, then it should find a balance point. There we go. Now we've got a thin layer of water, so these will stay at the temperature of the water. Now that we have access to plastic, what I want to do is put in the cooling system for my DHU here because it's getting kind of toasty because the water up here is so hot. It's coming down in here, making the oxygen hot, and then it's pumping hot oxygen into the base. Now that these are in, the hard part is turning this area in here into a vacuum, because all you want is steam. Uh, the carbon dioxide will, or any gas that's in here other than steam, could plug up these ports for the steam turbines. That's actually not too important in a build like this. I really only need one steam turbine because I'm going to be making so little heat in this room. I only have two steam turbines for symmetry's sake. I could get away with one. But on larger builds, where you have massive amounts of power, you want to make sure that you have only steam in your steam room. And I want to keep the same standard for this room. So I'm going to pump this out of, turn it into a vacuum, and then put in my water. And I do a thin layer of petroleum on the bottom too, to stop a heat-deleting bug. So this has overpressurized now once you get more than five kilograms of gas pressure the oil refinery stops working so i need to figure out what to do with all of this natural gas okay something like this should be tentatively sufficient and i'm going to disable auto repair on these as well because there's a little bit of co2 stuck on the line the co2 coming from the generators will just be vented out over here where these vent their co2 now, these I want to run on a higher priority than the hydrogen generator. So I'm going to set this to 90, 70. I'm going to set this to 70, 50. And these up here, these can stay at 40, 10. This is about to become a vacuum in here. It looks like some of it already is. Once it gets down to like two or three micrograms, it just disappears. Yeah, so this is a vacuum now. 
I can deconstruct this. Now normally I would make this aqua tuner out of steel, but I don't have enough steel. And since this will be running very far below the maximum capacity, um, I can get away with a gold amalgam thermo aqua tuner. The gold amalgam thermo aqua tuner will overheat at 175, so the base overheat temperature of an aqua tuner is 125, and making it out of gold amalgam adds 50 degrees on top of that, so it will overheat at 175. Now, this room in here should never get above 175 because it's being cooled by two steam turbines. And the way I do the plumbing, this will be the bypass right here. Then I have insulated pipes, like this. Actually, no. They go, they go this way. And there's actually going to be a bridge right there. Yeah, something like this. And then I have a bridge here and here. That way the exhaust from the steam turbines can get put back down into the rim. And I'll make the vent out of Golden Mountain. Now for the base, what I do normally, um, once I get enough material, I will use radiant liquid pipe. But for now, I know I don't have enough refined metals. I'm going to make it out of granite, because it's the cheapest material that is the most conductive. So I'm going to make all of this zigzag out of granite. I've set up another temporary metal refining station right here. It's just using petroleum. It's going to dump the heat off down here into this liquid. I need it to make iron to make steel. Um, I can't bring myself to make this out of gold amalgam. It, I, it makes me feel so dirty. The other thing I need is iron for the automation. I want to save as much of my copper as possible for uh, temperature shift plates because I'm going to need a lot of those and copper has a really good thermal conductivity. If we look at iron, its thermal conductivity is slightly less. So I want to save all of my copper. So this is what the automation is going to look like. I'm going to have a buffer gate right here. I'm going to go to plumbing. This goes right here. And then back to automation. This thermal sensor is going to connect into this part of the buffer gate. And this part of the buffer gate is going to come up here, and that is going to control the aqua tuner. And I've just realized I don't have any, uh, I don't have any lime, so I need to make a rock crusher. Put it right here. I'll do a couple. So I will crush some. I think I have a bunch of fossil. Yeah, I can crush a bunch of fossil into lime. With a cooling loop like this, where you have a bypass, you need to have a bridge bubble somewhere in your loop. And I'm going to put mine right here. You just put two liquid bridges like this, and then disconnect that pipe like that. So as the water or cooling liquid comes across, it will first try and go through this bridge, which will put it to right here and then this will flow this way with priority and anything that can't go through this bridge will end up in this spot right before it enters the second bridge and you'll have this one bubble right here of liquid or it will be a gap depending on what your aqua tuner down here is doing and that keeps the system from jamming up I'm going to set this liquid pipe thermo sensor to activate the aqua tuner once this is above 28 degrees. I've set up this bottle emptier here to have my dupes drop off some petroleum. Tony Advanced has a video where he explains why this petroleum layer down here is important and I will leave a link to that. This should be enough petroleum for now. I could always add in more petroleum later by bridging on to the exhaust from the steam turbine. And that's actually how I'm going to fill up the room. I'm going to do something like this. 
and I should fill up this room with steam. Or water for now, and then the aqua tuner will turn it into steam. Once they build these two, I will connect this back up, which will allow the water from here across here. Half of it will go through the loop, and then the other half will fill up this room. The aqua tuner will cool down the water in the loop, and it should eventually cool down my base, which is getting pretty toasty. Looks like Nickel is about to finish that. Okay, I can connect this back up now. And we can see this work. This is gonna jerk and stop a lot, just while the loop is filling. I just realized this is a horrible way of filling it up. What I'm going to do instead is something like this. And I'm gonna cut that. This way, once the water makes it into the loop, it can't be sucked out of the loop right here. They will keep this from jerking so much. Looks like we have some steam in here now. Um, I want to get the pressure in here. I like to run my steam rooms with a lot of steam because it keeps the temperature very stable. So I'll probably wait until there's about a thousand kilograms of steam in here, which is going to drain my water tank very substantially, I know. There's some water down here I could use as well. We're almost a quarter of the way there in how much steam I want, so I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect this. Um, that's probably gonna have to fill up across two episodes. I've got a lot of footage for this one. Um, I think this is pretty much all I wanted to accomplish here. I've got my plastic set up. Um, some temporary refining, which we had earlier, but it's in a better spot now. Um, I have a way to cool down my base now, which is very important because it was getting very toasty in here. Um, if you look at temperatures, it's evened out now. In some places it used to be 60, and now it's pretty much 40 or 30. And this will slowly keep cooling the base down. If I had something that had a higher specific heat capacity, like super coolant, then it would go faster. That's just how aqua tuners work. They reduce the temperature of the liquid by 14 degrees, regardless of the specific heat capacity, so using liquids that have a very high specific heat capacity, you end up saving power just because of how much heat you can move. Well, that's about all the time I have for this episode. Thanks for watching, I hope you learned something, and I will see you in the next one.